Hi, my name's Trevi, and this is an advanced Photoshop tutorial for accurate uh, colour changing. We are looking to change the colour of these wheels here to this colour, which is Pantone 2602. Now, in an RGB image, it's possible to use the image mode sorry, adjustments, replace color command. And this works by selecting the color that you want to change and any other of the surrounding colors by pressing Alt and Shift and selecting anything else you can get hold of. This essentially creates a mask and the color changes within that mask. However, when trying to change this colour to the purple that we've got highlighted there, uh, you can see a problem occurring in that we get this posterization coming along. And so some of the colour isn't changing, although you can alt-click on it to try and get it to change. Nevertheless, this noise here is, is undesirable and it's not really giving us what we want. As you can see here. So a better way to do this is to go into lab mode. So I'm going to make a copy of my original image and I'm going to turn it into a smart object. So let's double click our smart object to open it. Just resize it there. And we'll go to image mode lab color. Uh, now to get to change this into our Pantone color as accurately as possible, we're going to have to use the info palette here. So let's open that up, and we're going to use this tool, which is the color sampler tool, set to three by three average, and we've made a mark here just by clicking on an area. And that we're just choosing a kind of an average color, and that's what we're going to turn into our Pantone color. Now, if we look at our Pantone color, Photoshop kindly gives us the lab values for that color, and you should probably write those down when you're using this method. So we've got 32, 56, minus 48, and our blue registers 40 minus 8 minus 52. So rather than just straight away making a curve to adjust the colors, we can assume that our A channel needs to be reading plus 56. And it's a long way off that at the moment at minus 8. So what we can do is we can actually place all the information from the B channel instead into the A channel and that will provide us with enough information to work with using a curve to do the final adjustments. So I'm going to target the A channel and I'm going to go image, apply image with the blending set to normal and the channel set to B this will place all the information from the B channel into the A channel. Press OK. So now our image says minus 52, which is the same as the B channel. So in order to get that to read 56, we just simply need to invert the A channel by com pressing Command I. Now you can see we're already getting close to the purple color that we want and our numbers are getting closer to the values that we're trying to look for. So now we can use a curve, maybe in conjunction with a, a mask as well, in order to try and get the colour to exactly where we want it to be. So if we choose to make a copy of our A channel, we can utilise this as a mask by pressing Apple L to bring up 
levels. Force the grey to black and bring out the whites, the white areas to help with the mask. Get rid of some of that other stuff we don't need. And press OK. So now we can load this mask by okay, pressing Command click. And now we can make our curves adjustment layer. Let's move this out of the way so we can see what we're doing. Now let's go into our B channel first and we're going to flatten the curve off and usually it's an idea to keep the line of the curve intersecting the centre as much as possible. In this instance we don't really need it so much because we've got a mask, but it's just a thing to bear in mind. Um, also we've got our curves display options set as pigment ink for this part of the exercise. And we need this number here to read minus 48. And if we flatten the curve, that'll take us down to minus 48. So let's bring that up to 4 or close enough. Bring that one to 96. Uh, and there you go, minus 48. And with our A channel, we need to raise that, so steepen the curve. Let's try 86 and then 94. It's a bit too much. 95 and 5. Okay, and that brings us to the to the numbers we want in our A and B channel. Uh, now the lightness channel, this curve works just like any other curve in RGB mode or CMYK mode, so you don't have to worry about it going through the centre. You can just treat this as a, as a normal curve. Um, we're going to click on this icon here, and that allows us to float over our image to our target, and it will create a point. If we click on our target, it will create a point where our colour area is, and we need to reduce that down to 32. And you can just press the up arrow keys to do that. Let's close that down. So our lab colour now reads 32.56 minus 48. If we go back to what it should read for Pantone 2602, you can see that it's the same numbers. 32.56 minus 48. So we are accurately changing the colour of these wheels into a specific Pantone colour that's been given to us. So we can now save our smart object and close it down. And there you go, we're back to our RGB image. Let's close this down again. Also change the green colour there, but that's neither here nor there. You can mask that out if you want. But you can see this is our st target colour, and this is the colour that we've ended up with. And like I say, using the replace colour command, it wasn't really working for us. So you can see that it's much better to do colour correction in lab mode. Okay, thanks for listening.